morning, everyone. Um, I'm sorry I can't be with you in person. Um, it's actually yeah, the second missed opportunity traveling to Romania this year. I could have gone to the presidency event that we had in April. This didn't work out, and also this time not, but at least this time I'm, I'm virtually joining. And <clears throat> yeah, it's quite a task, I think, to talk about your piano in 10 minutes, but I will try to give you a, <clears throat> a short introduction and then I haven't seen him in the audience, but I assume that Damachai is with you today. Ah, there I see your finger. <laughs> <clears throat> and he will go into much more detail about <clears throat> your piano related aspects. Uh, let me myself look at my my own slides. So I Oh, yeah, you see the first slide. Um, and can you go to the second slide? Because I think it's always good to start with a look at the, at the history and to remember where we are, where we are coming from. And it, 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 everything started in April 25, almost yeah, 15 years ago now. Uh, when Jack Chirac uh, was telling the, his big idea to the, co the commission um, to have something, something, um, I think it was, was a time when the Google Books project also uh, started and uh, Jack Chirac didn't want to let the market completely to Google Books and um, have a digital library for culture uh, coming from the sector and for the sector. And then two years later, um, EDLNet started to build your piano. And then in November 2008, uh, there was the prototype of your piano ready to, to launch. And yeah, probably a number of you will, will still remember it started with a big, big crash because it was so popular at that time that everyone, everyone wanted to, to see it and it just didn't work. And it was, took a while to get, get back to it. Um, later on, it became a service, and then the next big milestone for us was the uh, release of metadata in uh, as CC0, and then one year later, the implementation of the European data model, uh, two big elements I'm also touching upon uh, in a couple of minutes again. And then in, by, by that time also, uh, the the previous multi-annual framework program of the commission was coming to an end and we were starting to lobby for the next round of funding, which was the Ale Culture campaign. We are still using this has hashtag today. And also in these days, we are in a similar position as we were like in 2013, as the next multi-annual framework program will be agreed um, in a couple of months, I think. And again, we have to make a call for culture to keep your piano on the agenda, high on the agenda of the uh, European uh, Commission um, to yeah, keep going uh, with your piano as a digital service infrastructure. This is what we are since May 2015. And uh, since then, uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide, we are transforming the world with culture. That's what we have given us ourselves as a yeah, motto for our strategy, which is uh, running since 2015. And this sounds like a, like a big, big statement, um, transforming the whole world. Um, but, and yeah, I don't have the time to go into a lot of examples of what this means, but as I heard, there are also uh, colleagues from the education area also in the in the audience i let's have a look at one example to illustrate this the next slide please <clears throat> uh, which is our our MOOC, our MOOC that we developed for educators uh, all over europe <clears throat> to help them <coughs> excuse me uh, to help them to use your piano to use the resources that we we offer also in, in classrooms and yeah, we could already see with, in terms of numbers that we have a lot more people signing up. Last year, we are uh, giving a lot more certificates. We are also um, 
sharing uh, learning scenarios, but um, next slide, please. There's also more to this, which is like the real impact we want to see that educators using uh, your piano now um, after having gone through the, the MOOC, the massive open online course that we offered, <clears throat> um, the majority feel more confident and able to use cultural data for their lessons. They also understand copyright better and how to use digital culture and how to do online. And they are more aware of how to use your piano to teach different subjects. So that's the real things we want to see. And yeah, uh, what we can tell from, from these results is that this MOOC for the people that have actually joined this had an impact and yeah, we, we transformed th something uh, for them and we um, established or a lot of better use of cultural heritage in the education sector, which is a quite an important sector for us. Uh, maybe a few words on how we are doing this. Um, next slide, please, uh, to talk about our operating model. Uh, next slide again. And I think it's important to state that uh, your piano itself is a networked organization. And your piano, when you say your piano, you don't only mean the your piano foundation, the operator of the platform. When you say your piano, you also mean the network association, um, the community that is uh, around us, but also a very important, the your piano aggregators forum, which is our key partners when it comes to um, providing data to your piano. And yeah, as long as you're part of the network association or also in the aggregators forum, you yourself are also your piano, a part of your piano. And yeah, I mentioned Damatai before. I think he's both a network member, but also in the an important part of the Agudos Forum. Uh, so he's also representing your piano in that uh, sense, uh, like the foundation is, is doing. <clears throat> uh, maybe a few words about this. Next slide, please. Uh, the network, um, I start with the foundation. Um, that's actually, in terms of people, the smallest part that, that, that of your piano. It's around 60 people centered in offices in The Hague. Uh, in the National Library, where I'm also calling uh, now in a, on a very gray and rainy uh, day uh, in, in The Hague. <clears throat> and uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> a much bigger group, much, much bigger group than the office in The Hague is the Network Association. Association. It's a community of right now, I think, more than two and a half thousand uh, members, experts from the cultural heritage sector. Uh, tech experts. And it's actually not, not just one community, but like six communities divided into six communities, depending on the topics people are interested in, be it copyright, be it technology, be it communication, uh, education, research, and now I forget one. Um, uh, yeah, and yeah, you can see the picture here on the right is from the last um, annual general meeting in Vienna, uh, well, previous one, and uh, we also recently had a conference in Lisbon, uh, where I also have met a lot of Romanian colleagues. So it's, yeah, you're also invited to join us, to um, uh, become a member of the association, to be much closer to connected to what your piano is doing. <laughs> Next slide, please. <clears throat> the third part is the Aggregators Forum, as mentioned be before, which is coordinating the activities uh, for pan-European cross-domain aggregation ecosystem both on the operational level, but also on strategic level. Uh, this forum is chaired by Marco Vendina and Sara Di Giorgio. And as I said before, Damatai is also a member of this, one of the accredited aggregators uh, for Europeana. And a lot of what this group is doing, beside the strategic work, next slide, <coughs> is also yeah, looking at the our tech and data and um, architecture and infrastructure. So said before, uh, since 2013, the backbone of, of this is the European data model. <clears throat> this is um, our common, yeah, it's not a, not a standard per, per se, but it, it's really a, um, the, the model we work with and that all aggregators and data partners work with across Europe um, to bring data together in a <clears throat> yeah, standardized and harmonized way. And what this is doing is, next slide, please. 
it is yeah actually turning such a beautiful clavicine as you see on the picture into next slide please um something more beautiful uh, for, at least for some people i hope uh, which is then the same object modeled into edm with the relationship of 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 yeah elements that that are important uh, for this the creator <coughs> descriptions um contextual information connected with this and i think this is a lot of what uh we do also in our daily work and i also understood that um we will get data in <coughs> uh, via the romanian aggregator run by Damatai. so at some point also this romanian content will be look like like this in edm <coughs> Uh, next slide please um very important element for us are the work with common policies and standards that's also something where the aggregators forum is heavily involved in, in yeah developing or agreeing this um, i mentioned three of them the licensing framework the publishing framework and the impact framework in the order where they appeared licensing framework is came in 2012, publishing framework 2015, the impact framework is our newest baby, so to say. And I want to say a few words about the publishing framework. And I think this is, um, for me, the most important one, uh, the one I'm working with every day, <coughs> and something we um, we can also yeah, talk uh, more in the, in the, in the future. The, um, <coughs> what, I think what, what all of these frameworks and policies um, have in, in common um, is that they're not just looking at Europeana, it's not all about Europeana, but it, it should also be really about you. And uh, once you understand also why you publish data online, uh, we can also then discuss uh, what can happen with these data in Europeana, but also everywhere on the, on the, on the web. So. If you yeah can answer questions like, um, or if you know, um, you publish online to fulfill your mission, or if there's a visibility aspect you want to um, get better with, or if, if there are audiences you want to reach, if you if you published online because you want to partner with different organizations or join campaigns, if it's about improving brand or reputation, um, there can be more things, um, and based on what is more important for you, it will decide also uh, where to go and uh, which of the frameworks then at, at the end also you can work with and use them for your own work. Mentioning the publishing framework, here we really, next slide, um, what we really see is uh, like, uh, is that there's a clear relation between the quality of data you provide, um, we, we call it tiers, levels one, two, three, four, and um, the 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 the, um, the the things you can do with it at the end <clears throat> and you can see it from both perspectives so the better the quality you provide to your piano or you publish your data online um the more is possible to to happen with those data the more people can use it the more people can use it for different purposes mm. but it can also works the other way around if you think about what you want to achieve with your data you can then decide what quality is, is relevant or uh, is the most um, appropriate for your your purpose and you, for example you can't expect your data to be used on social media if it doesn't have a certain quality that is uh, needed for for this this purpose um well then i'm coming with this i'm coming to the end like i said next slide please and is that for the what is true for the publishing framework that's also true for the other frameworks is that these are developed within the European context, uh, but I think they work also wherever and whenever institutions make material available on the web. And when this happens, uh, next slide, uh, we may hear things like this quote from the director of collections of the British National Gallery, who we worked with uh, I think two years ago. Um, for a couple of months on helping them to uh, with their decisions on making their collections available online under a certain conditions and we helped them to accelerate the discussion on uh, their licensing policy and they were very happy about about this so i think this is coming back again to the the, the impact framework 
something we would like to, to achieve um, when we improve data and make them suitable for the web, <coughs> that there's also something happening and that we, uh, we, we build this like in, in collaboration uh, with, with you and we, we help and facilitate and accelerate uh, this to really also make a transformation or an evolution of how cultural heritage is uh, visible and available uh, online uh, overall. And with this, I would like to end. And yeah, thank you for your attention and wish you a very good workshop today. Yeah.